Hey, thanks for joining us for this video. We wanted to do a short little uh, clip on an event that happened to us yesterday evening. I don't know why things always happen to us in the evening, but it did. Uh, we came home after a long day working blogging. You know what? Seems like things always happen after a long day of blogging, too. Anyway, if you've been following our blog for a little while, it's purelivingforlife.com. We've been having fun building this homestead. And uh, yesterday we came home, we threw some wood in the fire, tried to get a few more working hours in, came home and the fire was kind of cold. And uh, we tried to get some wood in there, tried to get some heat in there, just wouldn't light. Fire would not light. And we tried this, we tried that. Uh, we ended up taking all the coals out of the fire. We completely cleaned out the fireplace. We did a lot of stuff. And in the end, we found out that our chimney cap was plugged already. And it's only been a week. We just put this wood stove, well, maybe a couple of weeks. So everything was running fine yesterday morning. The fire was nice and hot. Everything was good. And uh, last night at about 11 o'clock with headlamps on, still trying to diagnose this because we need this fire because it was down to 12, 13 degrees last night. We finally found this chimney cap was completely corroded. Uh, it's covered in soot. And uh, this was a, a temporary chimney cap. It wasn't something we planned on being permanent. Uh, we actually have a chimney cap to replace it. So that was on our list of stuff to get done. But this happened in one afternoon. Uh, yesterday I came home uh, real quick to run an errand and I threw some wood in the fire, went back to town, I came back and the fire just wouldn't get hot after that. And what happened was we took a couple or maybe three pieces of uh, pine that we had recently gotten on, on a wood cutting uh, adventure. And apparently because this, this pine has such a high bark to wood ratio because they're mill ends, I'll show you in just a second. And the, the pine appears to be pretty wet, which we didn't know. We thought it was pretty dry. It clogged our chimney in one afternoon. That's incredible. So you can kind of see this. I'll have Alyssa get a more of like an up close detail. This is just our temporary chimney cap and it's completely covered in soot. So what we're gonna do this afternoon, we've got the wood stove shut down. We let it burn out completely after we got it kind of cleaned up last night. We burned it really hot. We're actually going to take the chimney apart and this afternoon and we're going to take a look inside and see if the whole chimney is just dirty or what. We do work really hard about keeping our fire hot and clean and uh, this is just one afternoon we took off and I'll be darned if uh, it didn't plug up our chimney completely. So we're going to get started on that. Before I do that, let me show you an example of the wood that we were burning. This is kind of an educational slash experiential uh, share. Uh, let me show you a little bit of the wood that we were burning and why it's, it's causing this problem. So. We were fortunate enough to find a neighbor who recently milled lumber for their house, and uh, it was a couple of years ago. And they had a lot of their mill ends, slab ends, left over. Well, we need firewood for the winter, but we don't really have time nor the awareness of where to go get any. We don't want to buy any. So we took advantage of the opportunity. We ran over there, we got all these mill ends, and they look something like this. They're basically the round edges of a log. And we've been picking through the pile because there's fir, red fir, and there's also some ponderosa pine. and the pine, if you look at this, the ratio of wood to bark is extremely disproportionate. A piece of firewood should have a little bit of bark and lots of wood. Well, we already knew this going in. It was something we were aware of. So we've been picking through the pile trying to find the fur because fur typically has a much thinner bark. And we've been doing really well. But the last load, we decided to start getting some pine. And we did. We got a lot of it because there was a lot of stuff left over. And so we started burning some of this yesterday and it turns out the moisture content on this pine is a little high anyway. Like it just doesn't want to light it. It'll burn, but it doesn't burn hot. But to add insult to injury, we've got this bark and it's really dirty bark too. It's not even clean. It's been laying in a bunch of sawdust. This wood in one afternoon was able to plug our chimney cap completely with soot from just burning dirty. Would not get hot, would not get clean. So we're going to check the damage today. Uh, to add a little bit to this video, we decided to do a single wall uh, stovepipe and a single wall chimney. Part of that was budgetary concerns. We wanted to try to keep our budget tight, but it was also a lesson we wanted to try to learn because we know that double wall chimney, insulated chimney is very expensive, uh, but there's a purpose behind it. But we wanted to try this. We wanted to just say, hey, let's give it a shot. If it doesn't work, we'll go ahead and move to a double wall chimney. So we've been very aware of the chimney temperatures. We've been keeping an eye on the wall. We've been doing all this stuff to try to be safe. But this is one of those things that can also contribute to the problem that we have is that the chimney temperatures drop too much. And when that happens, you get soot buildup. You add in bad wood and it just makes the problem even more complex. 
So we're gonna take a look at the chimney today, see if it's salvageable. If it is, we'll go and maybe clean it and then put it back together and we'll be back in business. If it's looking pretty bad, we may have to go ahead and change our chimney out and go to a double wall chimney after all. So let's get started on that. All right, so we got the chimney down and there's just real simple components here. It's a 90 degree elbow and also um, the chimney pipe there. And what we find inside is pretty heavy soot buildup. So it definitely got dirty. This is what was contributing to the chimney cap being completely plugged off. Um, hard to say if this actually all happened in one afternoon. You know, this maybe have been slowly accumulating and then when we added the pine to the stove, the low temperature and the, a lot of smoke and all that probably just made it sealed the deal kind of you know went for the kill so uh, chimney's definitely pretty dirty we're gonna go ahead and clean it up and we're gonna try maybe one more time to try to get a good clean long burn and see how things go and if we start getting a lot of soot build up again we may have to again go back to uh, maybe revisiting the double wall chimney and put something like that in however skeptics might say well you should have put a double wall in the first place you know what as dirty as this is i don't know that a double wall chimney would have helped us you know this is i think one of those consequences of building uh, burning wood like this we kind of knew that going in we kind of had that conversation with the person we bought the firewood from that we really didn't want a lot of bark with the wood and this is why bark makes all kinds of problems uh, wet wood doesn't help either but all this bark is not helping our cause so kind of something we have to just work through this winter you know we'd like to start acquiring firewood we've already been talking to people about other firewood but we've got what we've got so we need to make it work so maybe every couple of weeks we might need to pull the chimney pipe down in the elbows and give it a good cleaning just to make sure that stuff like this doesn't build up in the future uh, so this is the uh, elbow that comes outside the wall and so that's kind of where the cold air first hits the chimney and then the chimney pipe here also has got some pretty heavy buildup in there so uh, we're going to go ahead and give that a clean we've got some pine branches that we're going to use we're just going to drag those through the pipe and try to get it good and clean and then we'll put everything back together and get the fire burning again so that we don't freeze up tonight so we'll get started on cleaning All right, so we got everything all cleaned up. I mean, as good as a chimney can be cleaned. So we're gonna go ahead and put things back together. And uh, briefly, uh, before we do a conclusion to this, after we get this put together, one of the things that we're gonna do is we're actually gonna set uh, that pine ap apart from the rest of our wood. We're doing a DIY hot tub deck and uh, that wood would be perfect for a hot tub deck or maybe we'll season it for another year and wait to burn it. Uh, so that's some of the things that we're going to try to do to keep this from happening in the future. This is all just a test. You know, we weren't sure. Uh, we know the industry standards say you're supposed to use a double wall pipe outside the house. Uh, but we thought we would just try to see if this would work for us within safety guidelines and performance. And um, we're definitely having some struggles, but we'll, keep, we'll test it one more time and see if we get the same problem. And if we do, we're going to revisit that. So... Um, we're going to just keep learning out this process. You know, taking wood heat seriously is something everyone should do. Um, there's definitely some serious safety hazards that can happen. That's why we're kind of getting on this early. We're glad it's kind of happened pretty quick. And we're just learning from this whole experience. So uh, let's go ahead and get this chimney back together. We've got a new cap and some spark arrestor that we're going to install. So uh, we'll get this put back together and then we'll do a wrap up. All right, we wanted to add one extra clip, a couple extra clips to this video, just in case folks watching might not even know some of the terminology that we've been using. We talked about a wood stove burning dirty and burning clean. Of course, you veteran wood stove operators out there know exactly what that means. And it's the, the science of a perfect fire and getting a good, hot, clean fire. What that means is it's not producing a lot of smoke. Smoke is imp incomplete combustion. Um, it doesn't, it's not a good thing. You want the fire to completely combust everything and basically just be exhausting the gases when it's all done. But smoke is wood that hasn't burned completely. And the reason that happens usually is high moisture content or something is affecting the flow, the draft, the convection of the fire. Or maybe you've got maybe a high concentration of something that doesn't burn very good like bark. So in fact, this fire just in the two minutes we've been shooting before we shot this video and now has already cleaned up a lot. When we first uh, got the camera out here, it was 
putting out quite a bit of smoke. If you see a chimney putting out a lot of smoke, that's not a good thing. It's kind of romantic. It's like Christmassy or whatever, but it's actually a bad thing because that chimney is probably cold and it's not uh, releasing all of that uh, combustion. And so this is what causes soot buildup. That's that's where soot comes from is incomplete incomplete combustion. So uh, what we wanted to show you really quick here was incomplete combustion where it's burning kind of dirty. It, this is not terrible. It's definitely not great. Ideally, this thing would be burning so hot that you couldn't see any smoke coming out of that chimney at all. It's, it would look like there's, it's not even on. Um, but in fact, it's red hot inside. So the way we do that is we actually work really hard with the fire to get the right flow. Make sure the chimney's clean. Make sure we got good dry wood, things like that. And we want to stay away from a dirty chimney. You're gonna you're gonna have a dirty fire because as you stoke the fire, you're gonna cool it down. As you shut it down at night, you're gonna kind of cut the heat down, which kind of makes it burn a little dirty. So those are some known issues with wood wood heat. Um, but ultimately, you want to get good wood that burns hot, burns clean, and that way you don't have the chimney issues that we're struggling with. So I wanted to show you this. We'll let the fire get good and hot, and then we'll show you what a clean burning chimney looks like in just a second. All right, and we're back. Uh, we wanted to just show you again to kind of update some of our terminology that we've used in this video about a fire that's burning really clean. It doesn't even look like this chimney's working. It looks like nothing's going on. I assure you this is very hot and there's actually a heavy, heavy uh, flow coming through the chimney. So this is what a clean burning fire looks like. There's just little wisps of smoke, but generally speaking, what's coming out of that chimney is completely combusted and all that heat and combustion is taking place in the house, which is giving you full heat. So uh, this is part of why burning the wood that we discussed earlier was causing us problems. It's too wet. It's too full of bark and the fire cannot get hot. It just can't get hot enough to combust everything completely. So you end up just billowing smoke. And in this case, we end up billowing sawdust and all kinds of other junk that end up plugging up our chimney cap and things like that. So this is an example of a clean burning fire. You want this as much as you can. You cannot get it perfectly. There's no such thing unless you want to try to burn a pellet stove or something like that, but that's a completely different conversation. So anyway, here's what we have, a clean burning chimney. We'd like to keep it right here as much as we can. So we're going to stay away from that wet pine and we'll keep burning our dry fur and we should be able to stay warm, keep our chimney clean. And we'll update this video uh, down the road. If we have to clean the chimney again and again and again, we're going to go ahead and rethink our chimney strategy. So uh, we'll go ahead and wrap this video up in a minute. All right, so that about does it for this video. We pulled our upper chimney section apart, got it all cleaned up. We used some pine branches to do that. We did see some dirty burning going on in there, which we kind of had a hunch happen. We really do think it kind of happened pretty quickly, but we're going to keep an eye on it over the coming weeks and see if it's something that's a continuous problem. If it is, we'll have to go ahead and look at our chimney system again. So this fire is burning nice and hot again, if you can kind of even hear it. It's got a nice good draft to it and it's putting some heat back in our little cabin. We're trying to thaw some water out because it's starting to freeze a little bit. That's how cold it is here today. Uh, we've even got some wood in here. This is something else that we do to try to help keep the burn clean is we try to put our wood that we're going to burn next to the wood stove because it dries that wood out just a little bit more before you put it in the wood stove. So, all right, thanks for joining us for this video. If you enjoyed it and you'd like to see other videos like this one, please subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on our blog. It's purelivingforlife.com. We're building an off-grid homestead. We're gonna be doing some solar projects. We're hoping to get started on our timber frame barn in the coming months. So if those are things that are interesting to you, please subscribe on our blog over there. Also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We do a lot of micro posts, little short things that we don't always put on the blog. So uh, hopefully we'll see you there and we'll see you next time.